Earlier this season, I broke down why the Patriots defense was struggling during the first five weeks. My conclusion was that pretty much everybody on the team was underperforming. The run defense, especially on first downs, allowed the opposing offenses to aggressively take shots down the field. Lastly, I said that there were many miscommunications in the secondary that allowed big gains. While this team still does allow a lot of yards, and actually still the most yards on a per drive basis, they have definitely improved as the season has gone on. Their points per drive is down from 31st all the way to 6th, their touchdowns per drive went from 32nd to 9th, and their success rate has also improved from last to 23rd. Now, they aren't amazing by any stretch of imagination, but this improvement has certainly allowed the offense to maintain their game plan. A big reason for their relative improvement has been the play of Stephon Gilmore. In my last video, his play was extremely spotty, and in the last 8 weeks, he has improved in his consistency. His game in the divisional round against the Tennessee Titans was no different. On his five targets in this game, he allowed one reception for 36 yards. Gilmore was the outside deep third cornerback in the Patriots' cover three defense. The out route by Rashard Matthews holds him underneath and he doesn't see Delaney Walker's corner route. Admittedly, this is a hard pattern to cover, but when you realize that Trey Flowers was dropped into coverage, you know he's not going to be the one to carry the seam route down the field. In my opinion, he should have bailed on the flat knowing that it was covered by Patrick Chung and he should have been more aware of the potential route combination by the offense. Beyond this play though, Gilmore didn't allow another reception. He also had two pass breakups while covering rookie Corey Davis. My favorite of those two was in the first quarter. The Patriots start with one deep safety while the Titans have a stacked formation on the right. If you notice pre-snap that Butler and Gilmore are going back and forth they were discussing situational coverage. Usually it's outside inside or sometimes deep short, but regardless, this is a dead giveaway for man coverage. The Titans then motion Matthews across the formation and Butler trails. This is your second giveaway that the Patriots are going to play man coverage. After the snap, Davis runs a bench route attempting to cross the face of Gilmore. Gilmore, who took outside leverage due to Davis's release, has to drop his hips in order to cover this route. At the point of the break, where Davis has to create separation, Gilmore places his left hand on Davis's back and slows down his cut. This, combined with a quick turn and contact, allows him to stick to the wide receiver. Due to the pressure of Trey Flowers in the backfield, Mariota doesn't fully fall through with his throw and places his ball too far inside. This allows Gilmore to dive and break up the pass perfectly. His other pass breakup came on a third and 13 in the middle of the second quarter. The Patriots drop into coverage and Corey Davis is once again who he's covering. Marta's pass is a little bit on the high side and he's a fraction of a second late in his throw. These factors combined with Gilmore's aggressive drive to the sideline allow him to tackle Davis out of bounds to make sure he doesn't catch his ball. Notice on Gilmore's plant and break step how he wastes very little energy. His hips are fluid and his footwork allows him to accelerate smoothly to his target. Now, in my opinion, there is a chance that if Marta threw this ball perfectly, that Davis would have been able to make this catch. However, Gilmore played this as best as he could and made sure that window of opportunity was small. Before this game, Belichick gave a small hint that the Patriots are going to have to plan for Delaney Walker in coverage. When I watched this tape, I noticed that they actually double covered him on multiple third down plays, knowing that the Titans like to throw him the ball in these situations. In this play, the Patriots are in cover one man while they put two safeties on Walker on the right side of the field. This was Mariota's first read, so he's forced to move on. He then looks for Corey Davis, who Gilmore was covering perfectly on his corner route. He sits on his hip pocket, staying physical down the field, allowing no separation. This was actually the first of eight Patriot sacks during this game, which ended up breaking their franchise sack record. Now, if you were solely looking at the box score, you probably would have guessed that the Patriots defensive line completely dominated this game from start to finish. While that did happen for parts of this game, a couple of these sacks were simply based on Mariota not progressing through his reads and holding onto the ball for too long. In my opinion, he didn't have the best game reading the field, but Gilmore's play certainly didn't help. As I mentioned earlier, Gilmore was targeted five times during this game. Of those, there was this play in the third quarter where he allowed separation by Matthews on his hitch route. As Mariota scrambled outside the pocket, his pass hits the ground and doesn't allow the receiver to make a play on the ball. This was, in my opinion, 
the only real time that Gilmore was actually beat, and it came on a second down with 22 to go. Overall, I gave him an A- grade for this game. He's an excellent man coverage cornerback, especially when he disrupts the route early. He can also play off man coverage well, and I feel like the only thing he's good but not great at is his zone coverage in space. I feel like he's not as aware of the route combinations around him, but he's still an above average zone cornerback when compared to the rest of the NFL. In my opinion, after watching the Patriots earlier this season, I feel like his improved play is certainly paying dividends for this team. Before I end this video, I wanted to show you two plays by Corey Davis that made me really excited for his future. When I was doing draft coverage last spring, his route running was something that I really liked and this play shows it all. He runs a stop and go route, completely baiting Malcolm Butler in coverage. Mario's throw couldn't have been better, which allows Corey Davis to grab with one hand and secure for the touchdown. His other touchdown at the end of this game was also against Malcolm Butler as well. The ball placement was perfect once again, while he did a great job of keeping both feet in bounds. This season, Davis dealt with a lingering hamstring injury, and I feel like he will only improve. Moving on, the Patriots play the Jaguars in the AFC Championship. Based on how Gilmore is used in the Patriots system, I can see him facing pretty much every single wide receiver on this team. I don't think Blake Bortles will be a huge challenge, but I have a feeling Belichick is going to have to crowd the box with at least 8 or 9 defenders in order to stop the run. This will definitely put a stress on the cornerbacks and safeties, who I imagine will be a man coverage for a large portion of this game. Currently, the Jaguars are a 9-point underdog. Even though the Patriots are a really good team, I can see this game being a lot closer than that. Based on how the Jaguars are a run team first, and the Patriots run defense isn't the best, I just can't see this game being a blowout. Regardless, with this advice, BetDSI.com is giving away a free $25 wager if you use promotion code BREAK25 when you sign up. This is what I'll be using my free wager on. Go ahead and sign up and try to earn some extra cash before the season ends. Thanks again for watching and feel free to subscribe to my channel. If you would like to support my work, you can also donate through my Patreon account as well. Every dollar is appreciated, but if you can't donate with your hard-earned cash, do me a favor and follow me on Twitter at Samuel Gold instead.